Okay, so let's look again at uh, doing some more of the drawings. We're going to start with the mouth. Mouth is pretty straightforward, um, at least uh, assessing the uh, width and the position uh, where the lips meet. Doing the lip height, the lip, the lip height, um, is a little more difficult, but um, uh, we have to run, do some measurements and run these through calculation. <coughs> that was provided for you that was in one of the articles that we read uh, about the mouth. So uh, what are we going to do here? Well, you can see I'm looking at the front. I've got my sketch front open, but I don't really want this sketch out in here. I want to work in my measurements for the front. So I'm going to unlock that layer and make sure I'm in this layer. And now I'm going to use some guides. Now, first of all, we want to do a guide between the incisal edge of the central upper incisors. I've got a whole bunch of guides here already. If you want to clear your guides, you can go to View, Clear Guides. Let's we'll start again. So I'm just going to drag down from the top ruler a guide that just brushes the edge. And we want to look about two millimeters up. So my grid units are in millimeters right now. And I'm at, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more with the navigator. I'm at around 196. That's just where it happens to be. So I want to go up one and two. So the meeting uh, plane of the lips will be somewhere like this. Now, of course, the lips don't necessarily mean meet straight across like this, but it's going to be at least in the middle, something like this. And uh, we'll see where the corner of the mouth is in a minute. So if I want to uh, draw a line uh, to record that, I can, but I think I'll try and record the width of the mouth first. So for this, I have to find the edge of the canine, uh, the upper canine here. So now these teeth, uh, it's a little bit difficult to tell. Let me just see. I think... I think this is the canine here. I think this is there's a central and lateral uh, incisor, and then this is the canine. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. So we want to have the most lateral edge, the canine on that side. I have to do. You know, actually, that could be the canine because we've got. Let me check the side view. Yeah, that looks like, uh, one, yeah, that's mm, uh, PM1, PM2, one, two, three. So I think actually I might have to go over a little bit on this one. I think it'll be a little clearer on yours. I can really, it's hard to tell. I don't have this model uh, with me either. So if I want to move these guides, I can select this arrow at the top of the toolbar. And I can grab and move them around. Let me just see. That's the central incisor, lateral incisor. It looks like it must be right around here somewhere. Anyway, let's just sake of argument, bring it out here, but on yours you should find the um, the lateral edge of the canine. So now we want to make a measurement between here. We could just make the measurement up here, or we could use the measure tool. So if we go to the eyedropper here and just hold it down, we can select the ruler tool. Now, you probably did this already. Um, before uh, it was explained in an earlier video for doing measurements. But just as a reminder, we've got to tell um, Photoshop <coughs> how the on-screen measurements relate to real-world measurements. So we know that this little cube that we have in our shot, uh, sorry, in our image is one centimeter. So we have to tell Photoshop shop that by going to Image, Analysis, set measurement scale, custom, and so custom, I 
just did it a second ago, so it's already in there, but yours will say one, and this will say pixels probably. But what we want to do, and if you have to have the the uh, scale, pardon me, the ruler tool open when you do this, um, so you click on one corner here, and you can get in closer to get a more exact measurement, drag it over, get a pixel length of 116, and then the logical length of one unit, but what's that unit? Centimeters. Okay. So now when we go back to the mouth over here and we click from one line to the other, we'll get a measurement up here of 3.12. So that's 3.12 centimeters. And we know that the measure for the mouth is 3.12 times 1.33. We get an overall measure of 4.14, or 1.5. So let's say 4.15, and we're going to minus 3.12. And it's going to give us 1.03. Divide that by 2. So it's about half a centimeter on each side of the mouth. So let's do that. So here we've got a guide that is at the uh, almost at the 124 millimeter uh, measure. So I can just reach into this other ruler on the side and we want to go out five millimeters. So that's about one, two, three, four, so I'm looking up here at the scale when I do that. So it's about 124 to about 129. Now yours won't be the same. Get that other arrow. Yours will be something different. The scale will be a little different too. So this one is at about uh, 91, 92, 93. So we want to subtract from that. So down to 90, down to about 88. And so there we get the overall width of the mouth. Okay. And it's funny, this one on mine comes right to the limbus of the eye. This one doesn't quite. Whoops. So here in the measurements, I would want to now record this information. B for brush. Go on to the measurements front. And now I just want to draw a line going across. If I want to draw a straight line, I can hold down Shift, and it's going to try and lock it in that dimension. And there we've got the width of the mouth and the place where the lips will meet. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I can make a note of this if I want. My brush is actually a little big. I think I opened it up. You know, I can say lips meeting. Because this is just my measurement layer, I can make notes for myself here. I'm going to sketch over it afterwards. I'm just going to hide this for a second. Now, we also have to uh, measure the height of the enamel of the central incisors in the top and the bottom and record that information. So to do the upper and lower lip height. Again, on mine it's a little difficult to see, but if I use my ruler tool I can sort of get a rough estimate. So the top is 1.11. So I might want to make a note of that. 1.11 centimeter upper enamel height. And then, same thing for the lower one. This is a little easier to see, but it's from the incisal edge. And again, I'm holding down shift to make it go straight, and it goes somewhere like this. And that is 0 0.87, so I'll make a note of that too. 87, lower enamel height. And then I'll go into the regression equation and make that calculation. So when we want to establish the 
upper and lower lip thickness, the vertical thickness, we can turn here to the calculations that were drawn from the Wilkinson article about the mouth. Remember these are in millimeters here, so for the upper lip thickness we're using the Asian regressions here because this skull was classified as uh, Southeast Asian. Um, so we've got 3.4 millimeters plus 0.4 times the measurement we make of the upper teeth height, it's the enamel height. So we'll go back into Photoshop. And so I measured these already, but if we take our ruler tool and just measure from the incisor all down shift up to wherever it looks like the enamel ends, and I know you're missing some of your tooth information, but it's going to be something like this. So I got 1.1 before I got 1.17. Just say 1.1. And I did the same thing down here. And I got 0.87 for the lower enamel height. So let's go back to Keynote, <coughs> where we have these numbers. <coughs> Excuse me. So that was, sorry, I should say that was in centimeters. So we're talking about 11 millimeters here and uh, eight mil or eight or nine millimeters here. Okay, so 0.4 times 11. So we've got 4.4 millimeters plus 3.4 equals 7.8 millimeters, so something less than. Um, Than a centimeter, sorry. <laughs> so we want to measure from this line where the lips meet. So we'll use the ruler. And you can see up at the top the, the measure here changing as we go along. So we can get a measurement like this. Um, and we want to pull down a guide to mark where that is. And then I can go to my brush and just record that as the height of the lips in the midline. Do the same thing for the lower lips. So um, that was uh, 8.7 in this case. So, so our measured height was 0. Point, oh, sorry, it was 8.7 millimeters. Um, multiply that by 0 0.5, 4.35 plus 6, we get 10.35, so just a little more than a centimeter. We can use our measure tool again, our ruler tool, pardon me, and here we want to take it from the meeting line down, I'm looking up at the top, to, we get to 1.03, and that gives us, again, we'll take down the guide to this point, and brush, and that'll give us that position. Let's just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hide my guides. I'm going to command colon or semicolon. And now we've got a good measure of the mouth. Now I can go into sketch front. Make sure I'm in that layer, and I can start drawing it in. Turn it on, visibility, go into my brush. So the corner of the mouth is here. Now this measurements layer is a little too obtrusive, so I'm just going to turn it down a bit. I can still see what I need to see. Go back to sketch front. So we know the lips have a central nodule, the upper lip that sits over the lower lip, which extends down this far. The lower lip will go towards the corner, where the top and bottom lips meet. I might use R to rotate my view a little bit. The top lip also is going to go the central area. Now, we don't have any information about really how to 
draw the, the shape of the lips. There's nothing to tell us. So, But we do know the, the relative thickness of the lips, or in this case, the absolute thickness of the lips, but we can see how they are relative to each other. I can draw that in. This side looks a little bit wonky. I tend to try and be fairly linear in my drawings. I can add the organic sort of feel afterwards. I'm just trying to record these measurements. It still looks a little weird, but anyway, you see what I mean? And there, we've got a good measurement of the mouth in terms of its width, where the lips meet, and the thickness in the vertical dimension. Now, if we want to, at this point, we could open up sketch side and we could take some of this information over there by putting down a couple of guides. Oh no, I got too many guides again, so view, I'm gonna clear guides. Now in yours I'd like you to I'm gonna check out these measurements on yours. Uh, but if you make some notes for me to see, then I can see that a little more easily. So here's the meeting line. So in the measurement side, I can unlock that, and I can make a few measurements here. So I know that the lower lip will be will go up to there, the upper lip will go up to there, and then they're going to meet somewhere like this. And then the corner of the mouth is straight in line with that in this case. Um, I can draw this back now how do we place the corner of the mouth in the side view it's going to be somewhere around here uh, it's projecting out from the edge of the canine so something like this and so we'll have I'm on my measurements layer I should really be doing this on the sketch layer you're gonna have some information here but you know now we've got some information about the height of the lips actually let me do this on the sketch layer so we'll select this stuff copy and paste that. Oops. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me for a minute. Let me just redo. Where did I put this stuff? Oh, I made a new layer. When I let me just redo that. So sketch side and brush. So when the lips meet, this is how high they go. And how far forward does the lip, front lip go over the bottom lip? It depends on what the these measurements are telling us here below the lips and above and the occlusion pattern of the teeth. So mine is a slight overbite. Yours is a slight underbite. So your bottom tooth might be protruding a little bit more. So you're going to have to take a look at that and see how they fit over the teeth, follow the teeth. The lips are going to be stretched around the dental arcade. So We'll get something like this, and I know that the top will match up in the side and the front view. So when I go into modeling, I'll get the same information from both. So if we turn off the skulls, and you can see we're starting to get things coming together here. Now it looks like I've drawn in the top lip a little too 
thickly here. I think maybe I was overdoing it with the nodule. The lower lip is thicker. So we want to reflect that in our drawing. <coughs> Got the oral mental fovea here. So there we go, we've got the outline, we've got the mouth measured and drawn, so I'm happy with that. Next we'll move on to the eye, eyes, and the nose. Thanks.